हाय एवरीवन जय हिंद आई एम लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल के जे एस ढिलो पॉपुलरली नोन एज टाइनी ढिलो इन द आर्मी एज ऑल्सो ऑन द सोशल मीडिया आई रोज टू बी द लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल एंड द स्टोरी ऑफ माय चाइल्डहुड टू ज्वाइनिंग एन डी ए आई एम ए द यूनिट लाइफ इज अ लॉन्ग वन आई बिलोंग टू पंजाब माय फादर इज अ सिविल इंजीनियर आई ज्वाइंड एन डी ए इन ऑन फोर्थ ऑफ जनवरी नाइनटीन I passed out of IMA on 17 December 1983 joined 4th battalion the Rajputana rifles for Rajri as is popularly called and there afterwards served in various terrains starting from Sikkim altitude area but most even on Nagaland Manipur but most of my tenures in field area were in Kashmir where ultimately I became the core commander of Kashmir Corps that is Chinar Corps and that is when Pulwama, Balakot, and abrogation of 370 happened. I was a normal school student. I failed in school, like I told you. I failed in my class. I did not score the percentages which were good enough for me to go to a very prime uh, institutions. But then, I filled up the forms for NDA based on a recommendation of my class fellow. NDA was a learning which I can never forget. Every day in NDA is a learning. One is the structured training. other is the unstructured way of life which teaches you everything giving a small example punishment and rewards is part of any army establishment or for that matter even in civil rewards come easy punishment is difficult but punishment makes the best people and at least the best army men give a small anecdote i am a sikh officer that time i was sikh cadet and in india we have a thing called identity slip which you carry every time in your pocket every time you are caught doing something wrong the instructor will confiscate your identity slip and then you are told to come at a particular time to the office where the punishment is announced to you so one day my name came out for uh, going to the adjutant's office and when i reached there i didn't even know what i had done wrong so there i was told uh, the charge is keeping long hair whereas the normal uh, crew cut people uh, cadets they are supposed to get punished for keeping long hair and i being a sikh officer wearing a turban so then i realized someone has given my identity slip to the instructor and played a joke on me so i was very sure that i will be let off incidentally the adjutant also was major hello again a sikh officer so when my turn came so i was very clear that i am not going to be punished but he asked me so namesek what brings you here i told him sir i have been charged with keeping long hair he said yes you keep long hair and i was like sir he said yes you keep long hair three punishment carry on now this is where the first lesson i learnt of management of leadership in my life since i joined the profession where other side may be an enemy may be a terrorist may be a insurgent he is not going to spare you because you are playing safe or you are playing at level playing field you should be prepared for the worst when it comes to facing an adversary and then that adversary is not going to give you a chance if you don't expect him to be unfair so that was a lesson which i kept at the back of my mind till the last tenure of mine in the army so this is how the punishment makes a man out of you after india i joined my unit and on day one i joined in sikkim high altitude 16000 feet 20 feet of snow and when the first day i reached there early morning 4:30 as you know in the east the sun rises early so day starts early 4:30 in the morning heavy snowfall going on we were called for pt early in the morning and in india and i am i had seen my instructors coming and standing behind the pt fallen that means if the gentleman cadets or cadets are fallen here the instructor will come and stand behind and then the pt will start and i was a newly commissioned second lieutenant and went and stood behind the jawans anyway the subedar major saab subedar major nandram he took the report he marched of the pt he walked up to me he told me on that snowy early morning he said saab fauj mein officer hamesha aage now this one lesson of management and leadership again meant that officers always lead in the army 
and that is the reason you will always see the officer casualties are always on the plus side. I will come to an anecdote little later, when as leading officer, when we came under fire, how it was my responsibility to overcome the initial fear, save myself so that I can save my team. So it is very important for anyone and every day is a learning and in the unit, the maximum learning comes from the Jawans. Similarly, uh, I was taking a you know, test for Havaldar promotion to Nab Subedar. I had joined the unit. The thing you people must have heard, unit tarti, Paltan ki ijat, unit ki ijat. Why people give their lives for Paltan ki ijat? I will tell you this. I was taking the test. I was an instructor or an vigilator. A Havaldar was to be tested whether he is fit to be a Nab Subedar or not. Again, Sikkim, 1984, Havaldar Shair Singh, big moustache Rajput, and I asked him a question. I said, Shair Saab, aapko hukam mela hai ki aapki platoon hamla karegi aur phase one mein jayegi, yani ki sab se aage jayegi. And uh, he said, okay. I said, but one of the Jawan says, every time we are told to lead, this is not fair. This time we should not be leading, we should be the reserve platoon. So, as a platoon commander, what would be your action? Imagine what Havaldar Shair Singh told me. He says, Sir, for Rajarif, that is the unit I was in, when I talk about the unit, the platoon, he said, Sir, for Rajarif, the Jawan can't say anything like that. That means the for Rajarif, the Jawan cannot say that he will not go into attack. But I insisted. I said, no. He has said so. And now you be clear. What is your response? How will you handle it? And guess what he tells me? He said, Saab, you are not aware of the new people. You don't know the new people of the new people. You don't know the new people of the new people. Say slowly, the CEO has listened to the CEO, then it will not be fine for you. Then he is not fine for you. Now he is admonishing me as to why I asked this question. That means it was so solidly grilled into him that the new people of the new people will never be known for the new people. This is what we live for. This is what we die for. And this is what is the ethos of the Indian Army. I want to give one more anecdote here. The buddy system, how we care for each other during war, during peace, how we are prepared to give our own lives. When I say I or we, I am talking of a soldier. And again, a management lesson here. The peer system is not for competition to go up, keep stepping on the other one. Peer system is to go up together as a team. The team's timing is counted when the last man is in. This is what army does. If the 10 people running, the first person time is immaterial. When the last man comes in, that is where we say, okay, your team's time is this. So it's the responsibility of other nine, even if the 10th person is a little weak person, to carry him along. That is how in our training, unstructured part of training, unintentionally, we are taught how to be a team man. And this example will interest you because this is from Kargil War. Two Rajrif is the unit which did very well in Kargil, my regiment's uh, battalion. And when I was in Russia Rifles in Kashmir after the Kargil war, I was in Sirinagar transit camp. I was coming down for uh, leave. And a doctor, a young doctor, he came from Kargil and we met in Sirinagar transit camp. And we got talking over a drink. He tells me he, that was his first posting. And he narrates to me, sir, how good the Jawans are. And example he gave me was, he said, sir, we got orders to capture a particular feature, a particular peak. And the commanding officer, Colonel Ambir Vendranath, he said, we will capture this feature by 6 in the morning and the hot breakfast will be served to you on the objective. And he says, sir, a lot of Jawans did not eat anything because in the night they had to climb. So general perception is if your stomach full, it's difficult to walk or climb. And but the operation lasted little longer than planned because it was heavy shelling coming down. The automatic weapons were sighted by the Pakistanis, and the terrain was very tough. When the operation continued for two days, now he says his buddy, a rifleman, Jawan, he kept giving this doctor half a puri every six hours. The puris which he was carrying as his food, he kept giving him half a puri every six hours but did not eat anything himself. 
So the after the operation was over after two days. So this doctor asked this Joan as to how come you have kept, you know, hungry and you have not eaten anything. Why are you feeding me? The Joan's answer was, "Sab is so bandhon ki toli mein aap sirf ek doctor ho. Agar aapko kuch ho jata hai, to ye so bandhon ki Joan ko khatra hai. Kyunki agar goli lagti hai, injury hoti hai, you are the one who will save them. If I go, only I go." But if you go, it might lead to 10 more casualties. Now that is the buddy system. That is how you help each other for overall achievement of the goal. This Juan is not worried about his own safety, about his own life. He is worried about the aim or the focus or the target which has been set by the unit. And for that he is helping his partner for successful achievement of that aim. So they are learning every day. And these lessons which you learn day by day or on a given time, they are with you throughout your lifetime. A lot of you must be feeling, especially the young girls, the parents, when your children join the army, or when a young girl, you are looking for a spouse in the army, or maybe a boy looking for a spouse who is a lady officer or something. So what is the life like? What are your fears, your apprehensions? What is there in store for you? What is awaiting you in this organization, which is so logged in that outsiders hardly have a glimpse of it. Thanks to the social media, thanks to the channel like this. Today we are talking about the army way of life. Earlier on the cantonments used to be heavily guarded. So when a young girl is looking at how the life is, I'll give you my own example. My wife comes from a civilian background. She had no idea about the army life. And when we got engaged and we were to be married, the border deployment took place and everyone moved to the borders. Some of my CEO told me you go and marry and come back and in case the war breaks out, you come straight to the border. And under these circumstances, when after marriage she joined the unit, first day only I left for the border area. She was all by herself in an unknown place amongst unknown people. But when I came back after about 30 or 40 days, she was very much part of the unit. All the ladies, officers' wives and the Juan's wives, they had made us so comfortable that she did not feel even once that she is away from her parents. And that's how we always say, Paltan hamara ghar hai. Paltan ki jit tabhi hoti hai, agar mein apne khandan ki jit karunga. To Paltan mera khandan hai. Then uh, most of my life I spent in Kashmir, starting with September 1988 when I went as a captain, till I rose to become the Chinar Corps commander. Chinar Corps, as you are all aware, some of you may not be aware, Chinar Corps looks after the line of control, the operation of the line of control, operation across the line of control into Pakistan occupied Kashmir, all the defensive operations and the offensive operations, all the counter terrorist operations in the valley, Kashmir Valley, all the army aspects of it are looked after by the Chinar Corps. And I was the Chinar Corps in 2019 and 20 when Pulwama happened when Balakot strikes took place, and when Article 370 was abrogated. But my journey in Kashmir started in September 1988, when I went there as a young captain. Those days, so to say, terrorism had not started. But terror was there in the air. People were scared, targeted killings were happening, Kashmiri pundits were being threatened, and on the infamous date of 19th January 1990, when the Kashmiri pundits exodus took place from Kashmir, I was there as a young captain in North Kashmir. And I feel nice that I could save a few Kashmiri Pandit families as a young officer. Okay, there are a lot of questions being asked on the social media and otherwise also as to why the army did not intervene when Kashmiri Pandits were leaving, leaving the valley. I must clarify here that law and order maintenance in any state is the responsibility of the civil administration with the local police. Unless there is a Disturbed Area Act declared or Armed Forces Special Powers Act has been implemented. In 1989 and 1990, both these acts were not applicable in Jammu and Kashmir. Hence, it was the responsibility of the state government of that time with the Jammu Kashmir police to maintain the law and order. And in case there is a requirement for the army to come in, that could be for the management of the natural calamities, it could be for any man-made disaster, it could be for anti-terror activities, it could be for any strike management. For that, the state government has to give in writing the requisition 
the provisions exist but there has to be a written requisition by the state government to the army authorities for a specific time for a specific event for a specific area and the specific number of people of army or the columns of the army which are required and once that requisition comes in writing the army columns get deployed and then the same authority has to derequisition the army columns in writing and then the army goes back to the barracks so if the army was to be called in when the defense or uh, disturbed area act or the armed forces special power act was not in work then it was the responsibility of the state government of that time to call the army which uh, you, as you know at times they were called at times they were not called so i leave it at that now coming back to my tenures in kashmir starting in 1988 and going up to chinar corps commander most important aspect of my tenure is my multiple tenures in counter terrorist operations including those in rashtriya rifles as also with the special forces i as a young officer most of you would be interested to know what is special forces what is rashtriya rifles special forces is latest of the elite force of the indian army the para commandos as they used to be called in earlier days they are the fittest the volunteers who join the special forces they are equipped for special missions within the country on the borders or abroad as the situation may demand and they are always alert they have multiple specialties as deep sea diving as high altitude free fall and of course the para drops and all is there so they are the most trained and most you can say volunteers of the indian army rashtriya rifles is an organization where people go for two years tenure and they are the world's best counter terrorist force today i had the opportunity of working in rashtriya rifles on number of tenures as also with special forces personnel give a small example of special forces we were working together in jungles of lolab in north kashmir we were on 14 days self contained operation that is self contained means you carry whatever you can carry for 14 days you are not getting any rations or supplies or medical aid you have to manage from within and in those jungles where the leaves have fallen and every moment on the leaves makes noise i learned from the special forces how the silence speaks silence speaks loud than louder than anyone else can imagine we were lying dogo lying dogo means lying without a moment for 14 days at the same place and if we have to shift the location we'll shift it in 15 to 20 minutes and then again go and lie dogo that means we are not making any noise anyone who makes a noise is an enemy or terrorist even for our morning call or other natural uh, things we will just take three to four side rolls do the thing and get back to a position no one gets up no one walks no one makes noise so this is how the special forces operations at a very very low level are conducted they are the best they are the experts and same thing for rashtriya rifles the most ethical counter terrorist force in the world surgical precision they carry out their operations if a terrorist is hold up in a room inside a multi story house they can take him out with that precision that no one else in the house gets any harm done or any damage so we carry out our operations in this manner wherein everyone safe the property or the public and civil is kept safe i learned uh, very early in my tenures in kashmir the relevance the mother has in the kashmiri society every time we killed a local kashmiri terrorist the letter used to come out from his pocket wherein either he has written this letter to the mother or the mother has written a letter to him which she has received so his letters were always to the mother never to the father or brother or anyone so this taught me the boys in kashmir are very close to their mothers and when as a corps commander i took over the first thing which i put on practice was something called operation ma and like uh, i said terrorists in kashmir are very close to the mother so i appeal to all the mothers to tell their children who have joined the terrorist ranks to get back to the mainstream they should return and no case will be made against them in fact we will make sure they are rehabilitated in various aspects even within kashmir or outside kashmir and 
in 2019 alone approximately more than 50 boys returned and today they are living very happy life some of them are still in touch with me the mothers and the parents are definitely in touch with me and this operation ma was a huge success one is i learnt it in my early tenures in kashmir second is as an army man we value relationships we value human values i have like i said earlier i was not there when my wife uh, was uh, giving birth to our children so we understand what it takes to be a father or a mother every soldier is very bold very tough very you know dashat a type of personality from outside but from inside he is a very soft man he is a family man he values life he values human relationships and that's why when you will speak to a social media on social media to any soldier or a former soldier you will find he is most respectful in his language in his mannerism and the way he conducts himself he is not that uh, toughy which image people have about a soldier that toughness is kept for somebody else but for own countryman and countrywoman it is the softest of the heart which is that display by a soldier so our value systems are different we value human relations now coming to kashmir my most challenging tenure was chinar corps commander i took over the chinar corps or the responsibility of chinar corps on 10th of february 2019 and as you are aware 14th february 2019 pulwama id blast happened i was merely 4 days into my job and a terrorist attack of this magnitude happened now overcoming your apprehensions or overcoming the situation is something which is taught to us from the day one we never allow the situation to overtake you we looked at the situation we looked at the damage which have been done now there are a lot of discussion that evening in a meeting which i was part of as to why this happened as to who did it as to why this was done or this was not done so my point was sir all these are aspects which will come out in the inquiry as to why this car with the explosives could get into the convoy why the convoy was at this stage why there was a bullet proof or no bullet proof leave it aside today we have to make sure we get the people the module which has you know did this uh, id blast so we got down to the task and next 48 hours we got the information and we launched an operation with precision okay this uh, 100 hours we eliminated the yash e mohammed module let me tell you it didn't happen because it was supposed to happen no people worked for it and now i'll tell you how we got these people in 100 hours it is not that uh, they came and uh, came into a trap and we eliminated them we worked for it biggest thing after such an incident is the terrorist would move from place a to place b and will not make any communication or will not let their uh, place of holding up known to anyone like if you have seen some hindi movies underground ho jao now underground hone ke liye they have to just get into some safe place our aim was not to let them get into that safe place we for the next 48 hours carried out so many speculative operations that we made sure they will move if they have to move they have to tie up their accommodation at the next place if they have to tie up the accommodation next place they have to make communication calls somebody will have to go and check that place if that happens there is a moment which will be observed if that happens there will be communication which will be picked up and that's exactly what we did for 48 hours we did not let them rest wherever they were going we were hitting so they were shifting bases so subsequently we got the precise information and we knew that they're going to leave that place by next morning 4 o'clock we hit that place by midnight and we eliminated the module within 100 hours rest as they say is history so pulwama and how the intelligence agencies and security forces work in unison was a classic example of synergy and the team security forces that includes army jammu kashmir police crpf intelligence agencies and civil administration they work hand in hand with only one aim which i talked earlier the team's aim has to be achieved no individual glories individual glories will come on their own only if the team achieves them 
So this management lesson, I would request everyone to take home. Individually, you can cheat or you can push your way through once, twice, thrice. But ultimately, the senior management will start seeing through you. But if you're a good team man, that is the best asset or virtue you can ever have. Now coming to Balakot strikes, Balakot strikes for immediate reaction to Pulwama by the government. And I was a corps commander. The aircrafts went through my area into Pakistan occupied Kashmir, overflew Pakistan occupied Kashmir, defeated the Pakistan air defense, defeated the Pakistan air force and struck in proper Pakistan, not Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Balakot is in proper Pakistan. So this is the strength of our air force, our defense forces, and the will of the government. We struck and we came back safe. So immediately after Pulwama, a clear cut message was said that we will hit back. Dare you do a thing like this. Another incident or another action which happened during my command of Chinar Corps was abrogation of Article 370. Again, like I said, the aim must be very clearly defined and people should work for the aim. A lot of people today compliment me, everything went peacefully, sab thik thak ho gaya, 370 ke baad mein, kuch nahi hua, you know, it was peaceful. It was peaceful not because it was peaceful, it was peaceful because the people worked on ground, people planned for it, people prepared for it. People worked on the contingencies which can arise. People worked at the end state which we have to achieve, that is maintenance of peace. No loss of life, no damage to property, public or private. The end state is very important. Now, talking about the end state, I'm just reminded of an anecdote. When I was in NDA, NDA, as you say, it's uh, education, there's the academic curriculum, plus a lot of sports and uh, sporting activities. Swimming is one of them. I was good in uh, sports, but I was not good in swimming. So in swimming, uh, there's something called seven meter board that you, you climb up to the seven meter platform and from there you jump into the pool. That's the most scary thing which uh, at that young age of 16, 17 years of age, you can be put through. So uh, we had an instructor called Lieutenant Anil Save from Indian Navy. Lieutenant of Navy is equivalent to captain of uh, army. So Lieutenant Anil Save came for our swimming class and he was one Hell of our instructor, hard task master, tough man. He ordered all of us to climb up the seven meter board. I was the first one on the board and uh, he said jump. Without winking an eyelid, I jumped. When inside the water, I didn't know how to swim. No, I was drowning. That is when the Havaldar instructor jumped in, pulled me out and saved me. And after giving me initial uh, first aid and all, so the left hand Save asked me, you don't know swimming? I said, no, sir. He said, then why did you jump? I said, because you told me to jump. That was an order I obeyed. He says, that lesson I'm telling you, 370 end state, which I just talked about. On that early morning of 1980, Anil Save tells me, till you have your end state clear in your mind, don't venture into it. That means, Unless your aim is clear, how you're going to achieve it is clear and what you're going to achieve at the end of the day. Unless that thing is clear, then work backwards. Your aim was to jump and come out of the pool. You did not work on how you're going to come out of the pool. So get your end state very clear. And why your end state must be very clear to you from beginning? Because otherwise, just before you reach your goal, you may be looking left and right, now what? This is exactly what we did when abrogation of 370 took place. Abrogation 370 planning started well in advance. We worked on each and every contingency and we wargamed everything as to what can happen. If this happens, then what? If that happens, then what? And when actually 5th of August 2019 came, we were so well prepared. At the same time, in spite of all the preparation we had done, we had to keep it a secret. We had to keep a secret from Pakistan. We had to keep a secret from many other people who did not want it to succeed. So after 5th of August 2019, everything went like a clockwork. Nothing went wrong. 
because we had imagined what end state we need, how we are going to achieve, what means we have, what resources we have, what are timelines, what are weaknesses, what are strengths. Weakness is not a weakness. Weakness is an opportunity to convert it into a challenge and challenge is an opportunity to convert it into a success. So these lessons which started in the early morning of 1980 were coming in handy on 5th of August 2019 after 39 years. So this is what I'm telling you. Team spirit is the team spirit. Strength of the chain lies in the weakest link. I written a full chapter on a book which I just written is going to be released soon. And all the incidents of Pulwama, Balakot, abrogation of Article 370 are all there part of the book. The book is titled Kitne Gazi Aaye, Kitne Gazi Gaye, my life story. And by the way, Kitne Gazi Aaye, Kitne Gazi Gaye is a very famous uh, phrase line or the punch line which was taught after the Pulwama incident, the press conference which happened on 19th of February after we eliminated the Jashe Muhammad module which had conducted this Pulwama ID blast. The leader of that group was a terrorist, Pakistani terrorist named Kamran, but his code name was Ghazi. So in the press conference, a journalist asked me, sir, is Ghazi killed or not? And Ghazi is a very preferred code word by Pakistani terrorists. And going back into the history of my tenures in Kashmir, I don't know how many Ghazis we had eliminated. So my response to that question of has Ghazi been killed or not, I said, kitne Ghazi aaye, kitne Ghazi gaye, parwani, we are there, don't worry. So that punchline became very famous with all the RR company commanders. In fact, they started writing on the post gate, kitne Ghazi aaye, kitne Ghazi gaye. So on popular demand, the book has been titled, kitne Ghazi aaye, kitne Ghazi gaye. Another aspect which is very common to all of us, and more so, the, more so to the soldier because of the situations he can find himself in, is the aspect of fear, dar. Most of the people who look at a soldier with a ferocious face and body armor and other things, they walk away with the idea probably inko dar nahi lagta. We walk into the valley of bullets with chests open, people might think we, do, we don't get afraid. We don't have anything called fear. No, sir, that's not correct. Dar sab ko lagta hai. Fear is a human nature. Fear under adverse conditions is applicable to all of you, me and everyone. But the question here is our training. How soon you overcome that fear, regather your thoughts, regain your composure, look at the situation, carry out reasonable appreciation, take actions to ensure the situation which has brought in this fear is overcome and your own safety, your team's safety. Chatwood motto, safety of the man I command comes first. That is where it is important that as a commander or as an officer or as a leader, you overcome the fear in the earliest possible time. That time may be 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. More time you take to regain your composure, more chances of damage or injury or death to you or your team members. So it's very important how you overcome the fear. I'll give a small anecdote here. I was uh, RR company commander as a major in Manipur. We had gone for an operation early morning. It was drizzling. And we were 50 meters short of that peak on which there was a village. And we know that there were 40 terrorists in that village on that particular night. We knew they are there and I hit with a small team of 10 people, I hit the village. And we blocked all the routes going down from that hill with strong teams of 20 men each. And our appreciation was when I hit the village, the fire exchange will take place, then they will run down. Once they run down, they will be trapped by the ambushes which we have placed on the foothills of that hillock. So when we reached the village, we were 50 meters short of the village. And that is when these insurgents, as they are called in Northeast, they opened up with machine guns and grenade launchers. Uh, there was a Juan walking in front of me, there was a patrol dog which we had, and then it was me. The first volley of the bullets, the dog got hit in the leg. I 
took the dog and we dashed to a place of safety. We go, protected ourselves from direct fire. And I knew that if I fire upwards on him, I could see that insurgent firing at me with a machine gun. There's something called plunging fire. That means when you're firing downhill, where you are aiming, the fire does not hit there because of gravity, the fire goes above his head. So this principle of plunging fire, which I taught as a captain in infantry school, I was seeing it live in front of me under live fire and that too from the target end. Now this time lag after the first volley of the bullets hit us, the dog got hurt, we took shelter behind a boulder or something and then decided how to now recapture or regain the situation in our favor. I knew firing at the terrorist uphill by small arms like AK-47 will not help. In the team, we had an indirect firing weapon, which bomb goes up in a parabolic shape, comes down, hits the ground. On impact, it bursts into small splinters. The weapon called two-inch motor. So I called for the two-inch motor guy from behind. Nayak Rishipal, again, this individual also had overcome his fear in the meantime. He dashed under fire, ran and dashed next to me, and told me, here is two-inch motor. He did not say anything more. I did not tell him where the target is, what we have to do, because if I had spoken, we would have made noise and we would have given out our position. Both of us had overcome fear. Both of us knew exactly what we were doing. He did not ask me the target. I did not explain the target. I took the weapon. Since officers are trained in all weapons, I took the weapon, I fired, and engaged the insurgents. So there afterwards, it's a long story I've given in a book. It runs over three days, how this chase happened and how we engaged and killed those terrorists. This incident which I'm telling you, overcoming fear, is most important. But more important than that is regaining your composure and taking a rational decision, which is in the favor of the team which you're commanding. And in turn, it automatically comes in your favor. So fear is an intrinsic part of any human behavior. Don't ever believe a man who says, Mirko dar nahi lagta hai. He is lying. Mirko dar lagta hai, aapko dar lagta hai, sabko dar lagta hai. Dar ke aage jeet hai. This is how you should look at fear. So this is a small narration I thought I would share with, especially the youngsters. They have a lot of apprehensions about army. They have a lot of apprehensions about joining the army, marrying an army man, as to what will happen. You are in the safest family which the world can provide. Great organization to serve, wonderful to have been brought up, mentored, chiseled, and rose to where I rose to. But again, before I finish, I will tell you, failures are but a stepping stone for success. Failures hote hain, you will not be able to meet your deadlines, you will not be able to meet your targets, does not mean next month is not going to be the best. Never give up. Go back, do an in-depth analysis as to why you could not achieve what you have set to achieve. Set realistic end state. Work for it. Work as a team. Help the team man today, the team man will help you tomorrow. Agar aap is talk ke end tak pahunch chuke hain, toh... मैं आपको जोश टॉक्स का एक दूसरा रूप भी दिखाना चाहता हूं जिससे मैं काफी देर से जुड़ा हुआ हूं और मुझे बहुत बहुत ज्यादा पसंद है कि वो क्या कर रहे हैं जोश टॉक्स ने एक नया ऐप लॉन्च किया है जिसका नाम है जोश स्किल्स अब वो नया नहीं रहा काफी टाइम से है लाखों लोग उसको अब यूज करते हैं और जोश स्किल्स पे आप अपनी जिंदगी के लिए कोर्सेज ढूंढ सकते हैं वो कोर्स नहीं जो आपको फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री कॉमर्स बिजनेस स्टडीज पढ़ाएंगे वो कोर्सेज जो आपकी जिंदगी में आपको कैसे जीना चाहिए वो सिखाएंगे मैंने खुद जो स्किल्स पे बहुत सारे कोर्सेज बनाए हैं पब्लिक स्पीकिंग पे इमोशनल क्राइसिस कैसे हैंडल किया जाए अपनी पर्सनालिटी कैसे डिवेलप की जाए हर एक कोर्स में डेली क्विजेज हैं एक्सरसाइजेज हैं एक बहुत ही खूबसूरत कम्युनिटी है जो आपको सपोर्ट करेगी आपको इंकरेज करेगी आज ही डाउनलोड करें जो स्किल्स का ऐप और उनके कोर्सेज एक्सप्लोर करके अपनी जिंदगी को आगे बढ़ाए